So, again, thank you for being here. This morning, I want to, I want to speak to what I believe to be a fundamental issue within Christianity um, that, honestly, it's, it, 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 it has a lot to do with what I just spoke to Brian about here just a couple of minutes ago. It's, it's, um, I think it's, it causes great harm to the body of Christ. And uh, so I just want to speak about it this morning. So if I were to ask you, now you don't need to, add, you don't need to verbally answer, um, but if I were to ask you this morning, what do you think God hates the most? What do you think is most offensive to God? Now our minds can go a lot of places, but probably most Christians would, would probably think, well, you know, what God would hate the most, it must be, it must be like, uh, you know, unbelief or paganism, you know, worshiping idols and, and uh, you know, not giving, not giving God his due respect. Maybe, maybe what God hates the most is the way that is, are people who mock Christianity or mock Jesus or, or make fun of Christians or something like that. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that, uh, that God feels personally offended by in the way that people maybe talk about him. I don't believe that is what God hates the most. In fact, let me, let, let's turn it around. Let's, let, let me say it a different way. What if, what if I ask you this? What do you think pleases God the most? You know, in your mind, when you think in terms of, boy, when God looks down at us, what pleases Him the most? And I think that many Christians would say, well, that's easy. I mean, God lo when God looks down and He sees Christians who read their Bibles faithfully, pray all the time. Maybe fast and pray. Maybe they give money to the church. I mean, they, they live this, this, uh, this life that they're doing all of those things that, um, that we're supposed to do. And they, and they don't do all the things, you know, these vices of the world. These people who, they don't, they don't smoke this, snort this, drink this, shoot this, whatever that, you know, don't do any of those things. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, oftentimes we feel like, so what God hates the most are those who offend him, maybe mock him, don't do the right things. And the things that please God the most are those that have this image that we all think of as the perfect Christian. They know, they know the Bible. Did you ever meet anybody who they could just quote any Bible verse? Yeah. Now, honestly, it's, it, <laughs> some of you are going like, yeah, it's my <laughs> grandmother. No. <laughs> and listen, now let me, let me, <laughs> well, thank you, Tom. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a compliment regardless of how you meant it. Now, let me, let me just make something very clear. Of course, God does love to have his children read his word. Loves that. God loves to have his children maybe even commit some to memory so that there are verses at, at their disposal that they can use to guide them and others in their life. God loves that. Of course, God loves Christians who come to church, and God loves it when his children pray, and God loves it when, when his children do those kind of things that we know typically are the things that uh, we think of as pleasing him. And I also believe that God is also probably not happy with those who don't believe in Him. And I don't think God is happy when people mock Jesus or mock Christianity. But at the same time, I don't believe that those are the things God hates the most, and I don't believe that those also describe the things that God loves the most. I propose to you this morning that there is fundamentally a much greater way that we can please God and a much greater way that we can displease God. And in fact, I'm going to say to you this morning and the whole message is about this. I propose that God cares far more about our horizontal relationships with each other than he does our vertical relationship with him. I believe that God cares far more about how I tweet, uh, tweet. <laughs> his name is Dwayne. <laughs> I don't tweet, I don't tweet, I don't post, I don't insta, I don't whatever, whatever that, whatever that waste of time is that you all do. What was I even trying to say? I was talking about you, Dwayne. This is all your fault. It's your name. How you tweet? I, how I tweet Dwayne. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, I'm sure I'm not allowed to do that anymore. That is totally offensive, I'm sure now. <laughs> how I treat... God is far more concerned about how I treat Dwayne than he is how I treat him. Now, I'm going to prove that to you in Scripture. God cares far more about whether or not I am good to Victoria and Stephen than he is whether or not I am good to him. 
So we don't really have to guess about what God hates the most. We can actually go to Scripture and allow God to tell us what it is that He hates. So let's do that. In Proverbs chapter number 6, it can't, get, it can't get much clearer than what these verses will tell us right now. These six things does the Lord what? Hate. hate. See, we don't have to wonder. We don't have to wonder what God hates. We don't have to wonder, is, is this the thing God hates or is that the thing? Here, God's going to tell us what He hates. In fact, He's going to give us six things and then He says, yay, and there's a seventh. He's going to put one at the end that He calls an abomination, which is a really big word, which means something that God absolutely cannot tolerate. So let's see what those thing, six things are. So here we go, verse 17. What are the things that God hates? A proud look. Now, when I, what is a proud look? A proud look is where I look... And, and I look as if I am better than something. Now, nobody compares themselves to God and thinks that they're anything, right? Amen. We, we get a proud look when we compare ourselves to each other, right? right? So, so when Stephen looks at me and gets a proud look, it's because he thinks he's better than me. You are so wrong, dude. <laughs> look at that, but that's what it means. This is, not, this is not something that's between me and God. This is something where we have between us. Let's continue. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Are these things that are, that are horizontal things? Are these things about the way we treat one another? Or are these things about how we treat God? It's how we treat each other, right? He said, I hate these things. He's just getting started. Verse 18. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, wanting to hurt somebody, wanting to devise or plot or scheme to try to do something what, to God? Can, can you devise a wicked imagination to do something to God? No. You can't get to God. It's to each other. Feet that are swift in running to mischief. Now, we use the word mischief. Uh, you know, we talk about kids. You know, we talk about, you know, we, we use it very lightheartedly. That's not what that means. That means wanting to do someone serious harm. See, this is all, every one of these, these are all about how we treat each other not how we treat God. Let's continue as he's talking about the things he hates. Verse 19. He said, a false witness that speaks lies. In other words, if you lie about somebody, you, you want to you uh, you, you tell somebody, hey, did you hear what so-and-so did? And we purposefully lie about that person. Now, we already know that's a sin. We know that's bad. But again, these are all things about each other. Now, what is that seventh thing? What is that last thing that God says, look, the first six things I hate, the last one, I want to make a special point about God is making a special point here. He said, and he that sows discord or division among brethren. Now I ask you, is God concerned about sowing discord between him and people or between people and people? People and people. That's what he said. And now I want you to notice though, before I move on from this, I want you to notice there's a difference between this seventh thing that God talked about and the other six. The other six are all things we do. He said, look, I, I don't like it when you lie. I don't like it when you do this. I don't like it when... I hate that. But notice when he gets to number seven, what thing is an abomination? He says, and he who sows discord among brethren. God is making a very serious point here. He said, look, when you purposely draw, when you purposely try to divide two people, it's not the division you're doing that, that, that I consider an abomination. I consider you. An abomination. Is everybody with me? Amen. Now these are serious words by God, right? He's trying to say to us, look, I care about how you treat each other. I care about whether or not you try to come between a husband and a wife. I care about whether you try to come between parents and their, and their children. I care about whether you try to come between two, two Christian brothers and sisters and, and so forth. He said, look, I care greatly about that. In fact, I consider the worst, one of the worst things on the face of the earth. People who sow division and discord. So God is far more concerned about how we treat each other than He is us. Let me, let me continue on. We say, well, okay, well, that's, that's kind of that Old Testament, that's Solomon writing in the Old Testament, and, you know, I wonder if that changed with grace. Well, we go to the Apostle John. The Apostle John was, was somebody, nobody knew Jesus better than the Apostle John. Yep. We go to the, to the first, uh, you know, John, uh, first John and uh, chapter number four, and let's see what he had to say about this very topic. He said, Beloved, let us love one another. Now, he's not just saying that because it sounds real churchy. I mean, it sounds great. That's, that's kind of what we expect the Bible to say, right? <laughs> but he's serious about it. Now, watch what he says. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God 
and knows God. So wait, time out before we move on. So he said, if you love, then you know God. Now what is the opposite of that then? If we do not love people, then we don't know God. Right? He said, if we don't love people, you don't know God. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God. Then just in case we missed it the first time. For God is love. So John is telling us, and, and, and remember, John knew Jesus about as well as anybody did. And he's trying to explain to us, Jesus cared more about how we treat each other. Jesus cares more about how we deal with mankind than he does even with him. Let's continue on. As, uh, you know, and then he clarifies it. Watch verse 10. He said, in this is love. So now he's going to define what love really is. Watch. Not that we love whom? God. Not that we love whom? God. He said, love is not that you love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. That means the payment for our sins. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, then we ought also to love one another. Here's what he said. Love is not you loving God. Love is you loving each other. Is everybody with me so far? I'm trying to, I know I'm using a lot of scripture, but I'm trying to make a point here. God is very serious because too often times Christians get this idea. Well, I just need to have a good relationship with him. You can't have a good relationship with him if you're sideways with the people around us. That's what he's saying. You get sideways with one another. You're sideways with me automatically. You can't be right with me if you're, if you're not right with the people around you. If you don't love them. He said, that's what it's all about. God, God could be, he could have said it this way. God's a big boy. He can handle you maybe not treating him so well, but he will not tolerate us not treating each other very well. Amen. That's what it comes down to. You know, God's okay. God's, God's going to be good. God's, God, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He, he doesn't need our money, but he said, but you know, there are people around you who do need some help. He's like, God doesn't need a place to live, but there are some people around you who they need a place to live. God, God will be just fine today. There will be many people who will lavish praise and love on him. And by the way, he deserves all of it. Amen. This isn't about what God deserves. But he's okay, even if we don't do everything right by him. But the person sitting behind you may not be okay today Amen. if you don't love them. And that's what God is trying to teach us this morning. And, and that's why Jesus said, you know, that's, well, yeah, that's why Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 13, verse 34, he said, look, you want to know how the world's going to know that you're my follower? He said, I'll give you a new commandment. Just love one another. Just love one another. As I've loved you, that you should also love one another. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Now, I don't think anybody would really argue with anything that I've said so far. I think we all, we all get that. It's all pretty clear in Scripture. Amen. So how is it then that, okay, so if God, if we all agree that God cares more about how I treat you than how I treat Him, how is it then that we will speak to one another in ways that we would never speak to God? You talked about that when? This morning? You talk about that this morning? Yes. Wonderful, Laura. So, God must have a message today. Amen. <laughs> Who knew? So, so, God said, you know, listen, the way you talk to that person, you, I'm taking that personally. That's what God is saying. Amen. He said, I care about how you speak to that person more than I care about how you speak to me. But let's be honest, most of us would never say the things to God that we will say to one another. Right. We would never tweet <laughs> what is this? It can be tweet too. Well, you tweet with your nose? Stay out of my preaching. <laughs> Look, you, we would never tweet about God the things we tweet or text. What? Text, yeah, but that's, we're old like that. I mean, Joanna, that's like, that's so 2000s. <laughs> and that expression is so 2000s that I say that. Yeah, I know. It's right. But you know what? We wouldn't do that, would we? We wouldn't treat God the way we treat people 
And God says, but you don't get it. What I really care about is not how you treat me. I care about how you treat her and him and them and the person who's taking your order and, and the, the person on the phone, the service company that you're calling and you're frustrated because they, they messed your bill up again or they did this again and, you know, it's, and you're free, you know, look, this is where we live, right? But God cares about that. He cares about whether or not that, hey, you know, God cares about, God cares about people who run around with bumper stickers on the back of their car, you know, Jesus is my co-pilot, or, you know, one of these Christian, I don't even know what the Christian ones are today, and then we drive like jerks. <laughs> and he said, hey, hey, you want to drive like that? Take that bumper sticker off your car. Put one of those Darwin stickers or go, one of those, you know, put I hate God on the back of your car or something like that, but don't, don't, don't do that. Or we could just be nice. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> See, God cares about that. See, I think too many Christians, we think, well, look, I, I pray. I mean, I come to church, and I, and I pray, and I lift my hands during the worship time, and I'm, it's just me and Jesus, and, and that's all wonderful. But God says, look, I don't, I don't really want to hear from you if you have just been really, really unkind to somebody on the way here. He said, don't try to worship me when you are a jerk to the people around you. Amen. But I think we get the idea that it only matters what I do with God. In fact, I've had, I've had people tell, say to me, I, there are people who used to stand on this platform and lead our worship who have basically said, look, the only thing that matters to me is my worship. Well, you don't have any idea what, uh, about God. You can't worship God if you're not serving people, Amen. if you're not loving people. You can't love people without serving people. Amen. And, and just being all about you and, you know, and, and look, and that's, that's, you know, you, that's fine. You know what? Oh, my church is out in the woods. My church is up on a mountainside. My church is all this. You know what? That's fine. That's not a church. That's not a church. A church is a place where we gather to serve people. Exactly. Love people. Help people. Church takes place here every Friday night. Because church isn't about, it's not about singing, it's not about all this kind of stuff, it's not, about, it's not even about preaching, it's about living. It's about living for other people and being there for other people when they need it and, and encouraging them and helping them with their addictions and helping them with their depression, helping them with their anxiety, helping them with their needs. When, they're, when they break a sternum, it's about taking a meal to them. You see? Look, you know what? You want to pray for Beverly? Please pray for Beverly. That's wonderful. But don't think you're doing this great big service to God because you pray for her all the time. Take her a meal. Amen. Send her a card. You know, the city made us get, we used to have campers out back here. We used to have campers out back here for people who get out of jail because when people get out of jail, they have nowhere to go. Amen. They got nobody to help them. They just, they're basically just pushed out of jail and they're said, hey, by the way, go get a job, go get a phone, go do this, make sure you're clean, do all. Well, how are they supposed to do that when they have nothing? So we used to keep campers back here. The city made us get rid of them. You know why? Because churches everywhere are praying for the homeless. But God said, look, you got a space. Put a camper there. They don't need you to pray for them as much as they need you to give them a place to live. For a couple of months, get back on their feet. Right? No, not forever. But see, this is what I'm talking about. And there's too many, but too many of us, we have this idea about Christianity that it's, it's this, this pious worship I'm going to, I pray every day and I fast every day and I give money. Well, you know, actually the Bible speaks about that. In fact, notice, uh, look at James chapter three and verse seven. Notice what, what the, the, what James had to say. James chapter three and verse seven. I don't have it in there or it's not responding. Technology, don't you love it? So he said, look, you know, you, you, uh, he said, you know, in, in, he said, there's a difference between you saying that you care and you proving that you care. Amen. Anybody can talk a big game. Amen. Look, anybody can say they love people, but Laura's the one who drove to Sarah Moore this week and visited people who can't come and visit her. How long did it take you, Laura, to visit everybody? Three, four hours? <laughs> you could have watched so many episodes of Wheel of Fortune in that time. <laughs> 
What are you thinking? You see what I mean? We, we, but we get this idea that, that uh, you know, here's, let me just tell you what James 3 says. He said, here's, what's, here's what your problem is. You bless God with this mouth, then you curse one another. He said, brethren, this ought not to be. He said, you are not to take the same mouth and, and bless God. Oh, God, you're so good, and let's praise Him, and let's shout hallelujah, let's come to church and do all these things. And then we come and we curse one another. No, this is what he said. Thank you. With it we bless God and our Father, with it we curse men and have been made in the, who have been made in the similitude of men, or the similitude of God. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Amen. And which one does God really care about? God cares far less about the blessing we give Him than He does the cursing we give the people around us. He would rather we keep our blessing of Him to ourselves than to bless Him and then turn around and be awful to somebody in our lives. And that's what he's saying. He's saying you need to treat people right because when you treat them wrong, you're treating me wrong. When you're unkind to somebody, you're unkind to me. And, and this is what he's wanting us to understand. And, you know, and, and, and again, it's, it's said many, many times. You know, Jesus said one time, you know, he said, look, I want you to, he said, he, he was actually giving credit to the Pharisees. He said, look, I'm calling you a hypocrite because you do a lot of the right things. You pay tithes, you know, you, you, you come to the temple when you're supposed to and you give money and all that kind of stuff. And these you should do, he said, but the problem is you're omitting the weightier matters of the law, which has to do with mercy and just and treating people properly. So Jesus, you know, weighed in on that as well. And you can kind of see that and so on. Now here, let me, let me kind of find a place to, to begin to wrap this up. I just think it's time for God's people to stop thinking that we that we can have a relationship with God separate from a relationship with one another. I think it's time for God's people to stop thinking they can have a relationship with God without a relationship with one another. Amen. God's got broad shoulders. Hey, moms, dads, God can handle it if you neglect Him for a couple of days. He'll be okay. Okay. He's got resources. He's a big boy. But your children, well, they need you today. Right. They need your guidance today. They need your love today. They need your correction today. They need your discipline. They need everything from you. They need you. They need you more than that TV show needs you. Right, right. They need you more than that cell phone needs you. Those people on the, all your all your massive followers on Instagram or whatever it is that you have, and you're so proud of how many followers you got, they don't need you. Exactly. Your children need you, Amen. and we can't be right with God if we're not right with them. We can't be right with with God if we're not right with each other. You know, now let me let me just kind of give you an illustration here. I I think we can see how God feels about this as I wrap this up with. All we have to do is go back to the Old Testament. Two of the first couple of stories in the Bible. If you remember, you go back, uh, go back to chapter number 6 of, of the book of Genesis, and you'll find a story that m almost everybody in the world knows. It's the story of the, of the flood of Noah's day. You know, and in the flood of Noah's day, God judged the world with annihilation, didn't He? His judgment was annihilation. Everybody died except for Noah and, a, and his family on the ark. You take that, as soon as that flood was over with, there were new generations that began to, to uh, develop. And in those first few generations, we find another story that not as many people know about, but it's called the Tower of Babel. And what that was, that was a bunch of people, that was those generations, they all got together and they said, hey, God is telling us we have to disperse. God is telling us to spread out over the entire earth, but we like each other. We don't want to go. We don't want to disperse. We don't want to be spread all over there. We kind of like it together. And so they all got together and they said, let's build a tower and make a name for ourselves and become strong. And then God will have to let us stay together. And God says, no, that's not what I want you to do. And you, do you know the story? So God came down. The Bible says he confounded their languages. He made them speak a different language. Now, we don't know how he did it, but that's what the Bible says he did. He caused them to not understand each other. 
Now watch, here's what I want you to do. I want you to compare those two stories. That generation before the flood, their issue really wasn't with God. Do you know what their issue was? Do you know what God saw when He looked down on earth? Let me show it to you. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 11. Notice what He said. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. Violence. What caused God to annihilate the world? What caused Him to, His judgment to be annihilation? Because they were awful to each other. You compare that to the Tower of Babel, they were actually being real good to each other. They were sideways with him. He said, I don't want you doing that. And they said, we don't care. We're going to do it anyway. Do you know God wasn't nearly as angry with the people at the Tower of Babel, was he? he? He only judged them with dispersion. He just made it to where they had to be a very light punishment, yes? But he annihilated the, the generation prior to that because they were sideways with each other. So God is trying to simply tell us today, I want you to be good to each other. I want you to love one another. I care about how you treat each other. So much more. So much more. God basically says, look, you can, you can say almost anything to me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pretty light with you. But I think God is fed up with the way some of His children are talking to others of His children. I think God's headed up to here with Christians who battle it out and say nasty and hateful things to each other and about each other online. Hey, and that goes for husbands and wives who are splitting up. Let me just say, if you're a husband and you're a wife, your husband and wife, and you're splitting up, look, you know, there's no judgment here. We're not going to judge you. We're, we're for both of you, and we're going to help you and do all we can. But keep your dirty laundry in the laundry. God says, you have no business talking about people. You have no business talking about your ex. You have no business talking about this person. And children of God within a ministry, and even children of God and the non-children of God, you have no business being so awful to them. Amen. God says, what I hate the most, what I hate the most, is when you don't treat each other very well. It's an abomination to me. He said, it's the one thing I just can't tolerate. God says, I can tolerate you not coming to church. I want you to come to church, but I'm not furious about that. I want you to give to my work. It's great. I'm happy when you do, but I'm not furious with you when you don't. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to pray. I want you to talk to me. God, God wants all those things from us. And it makes him happy when we do that. But that's not what makes him the most happy. What pleases him the most is when we treat each other with love. We treat each other with kindness. I, um, yeah, we'll just, I'm going to skip those last. There, there's, there's, there's so much scripture about that. We, I, could take you, I could take you all over. Read the last, read Ephesians chapter 4. You'll find Jesus talking over and over again about, hey, treat each other right. Don't be angry. You know, the, the last thing he says is, is uh, hey, look, do this. Be tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Okay, thank you. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I won't take you to the verse, but the first verse in this that I was going to take you to, he was actually saying, this is what godliness is now. Do you want to know what godliness is? Do you want to know what, what it means to be godly? It's not this. It's not crawling on my knees around an altar. Although those are good things, and frankly, some of God's people need to humble themselves a little bit sometimes. We need to humble ourselves more than we do. But he said, it's not that. It's not how much scripture you know. It's not how much Bible you know. Well, I'm, I know all these verses, and I, I've read my Bible all the way through a billion times. Good for you. Try living one verse. That's what pleases him. He said, I want you to forgive one another. Everybody look. Second line. Third word over. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Why do we think Jesus said, hey, if you don't forgive one another, 
God's not going to forgive you. Now, that doesn't mean you won't go to heaven. He's not talking about that kind of forgiveness. He's talking about every day, though, the relationship. What God is saying is if you don't forgive that person who hurt you, regardless of what they do, you forgive them. Otherwise, there is going to be a barrier between you and God until you do. Oh, pastor, it doesn't matter, though, because I read my Bible all the time and I pray. All... There is no amount of prayer that you can make, no amount of confession you can make where God's going to be okay with it if you are not willing to forgive the person who's hurt you. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And that is the plague that I see, unfortunately, in too many of us. Right. We think God is all about how we... Look, this is what I was telling Brian earlier. It was all about how you act, how you dress, you know, sit up straight, don't talk, don't do this. Remember all that? Remember the bees we used to... It was horrible, wasn't it? That church made me not want to go to church. How old are you? He's 29 now. He's 29 years old. I'm so glad to have another chance with you. Amen. Amen. That's who God really is. You wouldn't recognize him from all the rules. and This is what God cares about, folks, Amen. from all of us. So where are you today? Husbands and wives, you cannot be right with God if you're not right with each other. You just can't. You just can't. You can't personally be right with God if, you're, if there's somebody you would not say, well, I just don't want to forgive this person. I can't forgive this person. I can't do this. That's, God gives you that right. But he also says, but you need to understand, you and I aren't okay. You and I will not be okay until you forgive that person. God loves us so very, very much. And he just wants us to love one another the way he does.